I got a lot of wrenches at an auction a few years ago, and I think I've finally come up with a way to organize them. The wrenches have just been piled in the three yellow bins that they came in, and that's made it hard to find the right wrench when I need it. What I'd like to have is some kind of display that organizes the wrenches into a system that I can see and find the wrench that I need when I need it. I also need to find a place in the shop to put this wrench display. <laughs> I've also made new handles for the wrenches that tighten the spindle on the CNC machine. And I will show that later in the video. I've been slowly taking apart our back porch and I got a few pieces of nice wood out of that. So with one of those pieces, I thought I would make this rack I've been thinking about. And what I thought it would be is a beam with a bunch of pegs on it and I could hang the wrenches off the pegs. My thought was to cut a series of holes into the beam section and I could put some dowels that I scavenged off I think a set of cribs from a few years ago that I had scored and sort of took apart and got some of the parts out of. So I made the hole so they'd fit those dowels just exactly perfect. Once the holes are cut, I can cut the dowels to the right length. And I put one dowel in place and then just guessed at a length that felt about right. The point was more to make them all the same than really what their actual length was. So I set up a stop on my radial arm saw and I could cut a bunch of short lengths of the dowels. Then I wanted to put the dowels in place with a single screw. So I drilled a hole through the bottom of the hole that I cut on the CNC. Then I could flip the board over and cut countersinks into the backside of the, the beam piece. Then I could put a, a single screw into each dowel and this would just hold them in place. So I think mostly the hole and the, the snugness of the hole is what's holding the dowel in place structurally. Then I can cut the beam to its final length I found a spot under the big radial arm saw where I could hang this rack for the wrenches. I needed to make a little cutout for the stop switch for the big radial arm saw. So I could mark where that is and then cut that out. Then I needed a way to hang the rack under the front of the table on the big radial arm saw. So I made two wooden brackets which were simply a piece of plywood that would screw to the underside of the table, then a piece of two by four that would hang down and make some structure for the rack to hang off of. So I just needed to drill a bunch of holes for screws. I made sort of a plywood plate. And I could attach that piece of plywood to the piece of two by four. And this is all very straightforward. Then the tricky part was going to be attaching this little assembly to the underside of the table. So I put the screws in first, then I could put the bracket in place and then put the screws in. And it actually wasn't too hard. I just had to get down in all of the sawdust and cobwebs. <laughs> And once the brackets are in place, I can clamp the rack to them and position the rack in the, in the right location. I was by myself, so I used a rubber tub to hold one end up. And I started with the bigger clamps and then I decided the littler clamps would work better as they're not as in the way as I put the screws in. Now it's just a matter of attaching the rack to the brackets. What I like about this too is it's all put together with screws, so it can be taken apart or modified if it needs to be. And I can put all the wrenches on and it works really well. 
They're sort of down and out of the way, but still very accessible. I also have a bin with a bunch of open wrenches, I guess you'd call them. The wrenches that don't have the complete circle at one end, so I can't really hang these like I did with the other ones. When I was looking online at what people do to store wrenches, <laughs> this was a rack design that I saw a lot of, where you have a piece of wood and you cut a bunch of angled slots in it and then the wrenches sit in those slots. I marked out an inch spacing and I could then cut a slot at every inch. I angled the radial arm saw just a little bit and I could cut the slots, sort of like they're little dados. Then I found a place where I could hang this system on my French cleat. So I needed a little piece of cleat, which I attached to the back. And I found a place over by the dust collector where I had a little bit of room and some height for this to work. And I could put those wrenches into this rack. And it seems to work really well. I thought about labeling the two racks as to which wrench went where, but that seemed too specific. If I ever wanted to move the wrenches around, it would make that not really work very well. The other wrench-related project that I've been wanting to do in the shop is to make longer handles for the two wrenches that tighten and loosen the collet on the spindle on the CNC machine. It's not so much that I want to make it easier to make the collet tighter. I want to make it easier to loosen the collet, as when I untighten the collet, the wrenches tend to move and sometimes I hit my knuckles together. And I realize that I need to be careful when tightening with more leverage that I shouldn't over tighten. So I have this oak that I cut up a few years ago and I found a piece of it that isn't really big enough for a bigger project. And I think I can get a piece for each of the handles out of it. And I found a piece I could cut in half and still have the right length. Then I can joint and plane the two pieces into a square section. This is one of the wrenches and it has sort of a rubber sleeve on the handle, which I thought maybe I could get off with the compressed air, but it didn't quite work. So I just cut it off. <laughs> so those are the two wrenches. One's fairly thin and one's a little thicker. So my thought is that the handle will wrap around the wrench similar to the way a handle wraps around the tang on a knife. But a little differently than the way a handle would work on a knife is that the handle will be longer than the wrench handle or sort of the, the knife tang would be. So my thought is to cut the piece of oak in half and insert a sort of a, a filler piece that's the thickness of the wrench. Then I can clamp the handle to the wrench with two bolts. So I found a piece of walnut I could use for that filler piece. And I cut it and then I planed it just to the right thickness. I kept it just the, the tiniest bit thicker than it needed to be. Then I could cut the piece of oak in half, found the center. Then I glued the spacer piece to one side of the oak and made sure it's the right thickness <laughs> and clamped that in place and let the glue set up. And I did both of them this way. One of the wrenches is thicker than the other, which made it a little easier as I could keep track of which handle was going to which wrench, although the handles were basically the same, so it didn't really matter. Then once they were dry, I could trim the ends off. So I left the spacer piece a little bit thick, and then I could sand it at this point and get it right to where it fit nice and tight on the wrench. Then I could glue the other piece of oak on. 
it was an extra step in the gluing process, but it let me get the dimension of the spacer piece just right. The thicker wrench needed another hole for the bolt, so I drilled another hole in that wrench. And once the glue was all set up, I could trim up the ends. And I could set where the wrenches are going to be within the handle. And I could mark where the holes for the bolts are. And I could drill those holes. I put a wedge in one end where the space is for the wrench. I found the top piece of oak would flex quite a bit when I put the drill press into it. So it kept everything nice and square and straight. Then for turning the handles, I wanted to glue a little scrap piece on the end of each of the glue ups. So I made a little square and I can glue that on each end. And that'll give me something for the drive center on the lathe to sink into and it will let the tailstock have something to attach to as well. I was thinking I'd have the wrench end at the tailstock on the lathe and the tailstock would separate the two pieces, I think, as I put pressure on the lathe with the tailstock. So I wanted a little piece of wood to sort of hold the two pieces together and have something for the tailstock to go into. Then I can find the centers on those. And I want to cut a X pattern in the drive side. Then my drive center on the lathe can fit into that cut and get a nice grip on the piece. And the tailstock end can go into the other end where I've drilled a little hole. Seems to be held really well. I used my big gouge to do most of the work on these. It's good for removing a lot of material, and if you hold it at a nice angle, it gives a pretty nice finish, too. I didn't bother cutting the corners down before I put it on the lathe, but it went pretty fast, so that wasn't really a big deal. I just kind of guessed at a shape for the handle. I left it a little thicker where the wrench is, and I brought it in a little narrower where the hand will go on the handle. Left a little bit of a thicker part at the end, Here's the whole process sped up. Got it round first, and then started finding the shape. And I can open the ends a little bit. I took down the little scrap piece. And did a little final surface work with the scraper. Made sure the width was going to be good. And I can work on the, the wrench end. Wasn't sure quite what kind of shape to do at this end, so I, I left it a little big at this point. I didn't really want to follow the shape of the wrench, as it didn't make a whole lot of sense with the shape of the handle. So I'm going to end up with a gap where the wrench is. I thought about making the wrench fit inside the handle, but then the bolts wouldn't be clamping against the wrench, and they wouldn't be holding a whole lot. I think the way I'm doing it is more functional, but it isn't quite as pretty. <laughs> I can get my steady out and do the ends of the handle. I got it centered with the tailstock, and then I can move that out of the way. Probably should have cut this off on the bandsaw first. Would have made this a little easier, <laughs> but it turned just fine. And a little quick sanding, and it's perfect. Now to do a little more drilling, I needed some space for the heads of the bolts and for the, for the nut on the nut end of the bolts. So I needed to make a little bit bigger pocket on each side. I've got a scrap piece of wood with a V cut in it, so I can put round, round things in that and hold them on the drill press. It moved around a little bit, but I managed to hold it in place well enough. And I was kind of just guessing at the depth, too. Now I can shove the wrenches in place. For the most part, they went in. The, the thinner one needed a little help. <laughs> then the bolts that I had, which have nice little nuts with caps on them, 
were just slightly too long, which is better than being just a little bit too short. <laughs> but it meant I, I had to cut them down. So I cut off a little bit. I left a nut on the bolt. Then I could grind off the tip just to make it a little prettier, mostly. Then I can use that bolt I left on to force its way off and sort of clean up the threads on the end. It's not really re-threading it, but it's just kind of getting the burr off. And it will mean I can put the bolts for the wrenches on. It actually looks kind of interesting. <laughs> I had made sure the space that I had drilled into the handle would also fit the socket to tighten up the bolt, which it, it just barely fit. And the, the thicker wrench works. It's a tiny bit crooked, but... <laughs> crooked. So now I can see if they work better. And what I found right away is, yes, it was, it was really nice having the extra length. But the thickness of the handle, especially towards the collet, is a little bit in the way. It works, but I was thinking it could be a little bit better. So I took the handles off. This is another nice part of this design is I can take it apart if I need to. It's not glued in place. And I wanted to turn down a little bit of the handle near where the, where the wrench head is. And because my rollers were behind where the hole is, it was pushing the whole piece out. So I made a little block and used the tailstock to hold everything back towards the drive side of the lathe. And I could do a little sanding, push a little bit with the sander. It didn't take off too much, but just a little bit. Then I could put everything back together again. <laughs> I had all the parts made, so it went much quicker this time. And then I put finish on. I just did walnut oil. But they actually look pretty nice. And they work really well. It's nice having that extra leverage on them. And like I said before, I need to be careful not to over-tighten the collet. I don't want to strip it or wear it out faster than it should be. Thanks for watching.